I'd love to start with Father Ashenden first of all and ask the question, what is marriage? Marriage is a commitment of one man and one woman for life with the intention of having children. Uh, and the outcomes of that, uh, despite the fact that we're all flawed and life is difficult and people are complicated, the outcomes are broadly really quite good. Children who have uh, who live who are brought up by their genetic parents are on the whole better protected, better loved, better nurtured, and better cared for. Um, if you change that to a, a different um, way of relating to people, you find the outcomes are, are worse. And the problem is that they're worse for the children. And so they're worse in terms of poverty and insecurity, and then later on drug and alcohol dependency. And not surprisingly, they're worse in terms of the way children learn to manage their own lives uh, and find their own capacity for staying in faithful relationships. And we've moved from one uh, kind of marriage, definition of marriage uh, to, to a, a variety of different definitions. And it looks as though the people who are paying the price for this are the children. Absolutely. And Harry, I'll come to you in a moment, but Father Ashenden, while you're here, what do you make of the findings of this study? Well, they're not a surprise. I mean, people, <laughs> people my age have known this. I mean, I grew up in the, in the, in the 60s. And so in the early 60s, um, there was a, a myth that was put around, and that was that, that pleasure is cost-free. Mm. You can do what you want, and you won't have to pay for it. And one of the, one of the problems in this society is it's often, it's often portrayed as though it's moralists against people who want to live freely. But it isn't that at all. It's about telling the whole story. It's always been the case. All societies have known that you have to pay for pleasure. And one of the things we've done is to, is to persuade people that, that, that not just sex, but primarily sex, but sex and alcohol and drugs can be had without any consequences. And the trouble is there are consequences because of the way in which children emerge from, uh, from sexual intimacy. And so um, in a way, I, it's just it's amazing to me that we have to get 40 or 50 years down the line before finally the government says the statistics are in uh, and so-called free love is actually extremely damaging to children, damaging to families. And what it's discovered is it's damaging to the state, mm. uh, the, the cost of supporting uh, broken families economically as well as in all the hidden costs is just enormous. And so actually it, it, we have to have a rethink about the way we live our lives and particularly the way in which we do our morality publicly and privately. Absolutely. Common sense right there. Harry, is this a direct result of the sexual revolution of the 1960s? Um, I think that a, I mean, the, the report has covered ground that's been, is pretty well known to most social scientists. I mean, you, the purpose of marriage, social scientists would probably say, um, is to encourage men to invest in their future offspring. That's the primary purpose of it. Um, and I think if you sell it on that basis, that's great. And that's what that's the reason why the state is uh, involved in it. It's not necessarily why we do it. Um, but um, I think that's the real, uh, ultimately, the purpose of marriage. But what's changed um, from about the 1960s when birth control came in for all its, its wonderful freedoms that it brought, uh, it also brought in the possibility that you could um, now sleep with somebody or live with them without fear of getting pregnant. Um, and that sort of edged, edged us towards this idea that um, cohabitation is fine, it's consequence free, and um, you don't need to get married because after all, when you look at two couples who um, are one's cohabiting and one's married, uh, on the outside, they can look very, very similar. Uh, but it's what goes on on the inside that's, uh, that really defines the difference uh, and the kind of outcomes that Gavin's been talking about um, are, are very clear. So across the socioeconomic groups, across um, ethnic groups, um, people who marry, by and large, on average, and it's important to say on average, on average, uh, are more likely to stay together and their kids are less likely to experience serious problems when they're growing up. So I think that's, that's really what's going on. So, yeah, the sexual revolution, really, the... Uh, birth control was really what changed the game and we're still coming to terms with that now. Absolutely and Harry looking at the other end of the spectrum here why do you think there's been such an increase in divorce rates? Well it hasn't I mean it, 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 there was a big divorce increase in divorce rates in in the 60s and 70s and into the 80s but from about 19 from about the mid, mid to late 80s uh, onwards um, divorce rates have been steadily edging their way downwards um, we did some interesting research at, at Marriage Foundation where we 
looked at who actually files for divorce. Um, and we've looked at um, uh, each cohort of marriage. So if you married in 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000, etc., and followed people over time. Um, and what we found was that almost all of the change in divorce rates occurs in the first 10 years of marriage. So in the 60s and 70s, that that breakup rate in those early years um, went up dramatically. And it was entirely uh, also um, uh, attributed to more women filing for divorce. So there are more women um, in the 70s and 80s who were frustrated with their, with their husbands um, who were filing for divorce, whereas now it's the other way around. And I think what's happened, um, and the reason why we're back to 1970s levels of divorce now, um, is I think because men who marry now are no longer doing it for social and family reasons. I think they are they are they are now deciding into marriage rather than sliding into marriage, which is a, um, a, a social science type phrase. But it's a nice way of describing it. Um, so we're now seeing people really being intentional about their marriage. Um, and that's why divorce rates are so low. And the knock on effect actually has been that the proportion of lone parent families has actually gone down the last few years, simply because married families are doing so much better than they were, say, 20 years ago. Um, but the flip side is that cohabiting families are still very much more at risk of splitting up. Thank you. And Father Ashenden, with the number of uh, children being born out of wedlock increasing, uh, marriages going down and abortion rates increasing, do you think there's a link here between the lack of religious faith in the country and the decline in our social values? Yes, I do. We're one of the most secular countries in the world. And one of the things we haven't said so far is that we have double the number of single parent families of any other European country. Uh, and I think there's a, uh, there'll be a number of factors, there are always a variety of factors, but I'm sure one of them is our secularization. And the problem with this is that the, the reason the religious atmosphere matters is because um, left to ourselves, we tend to do what we think we can get away with. And one of the reasons why this rather awkward sense of public morality has an effect is it's designed to, to help us behave when otherwise we wouldn't want to behave. And so some level of public stigma is, is really quite important in order to uh, give us an incentive to do things that aren't in our immediate hedonistic best interest. So we've been mocking uh, religious pruriates and religious morality and, and, and so-called stigma effect for a long time. But without it, um, the glue that holds people together and, and, and helps add a certain amount of pressure to do things that you don't immediately, that you don't want to do this year, but you might wish you'd done in 10 years time isn't there. Absolutely. So yes, um, we have to find some ide ideology bigger than us to help us behave.